Can AI drive you insane? Well, there is a new mental health crisis that's happening across the globe, and it has psychiatrists treating people with what they're calling AI-induced psychosis. And this is happening to people after extended conversations with their AI chatbots. Now, these are not isolated incidents. These are multiplying, and the warning signs are being ignored. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the AI for Everyone Daily Brief. When this story first came across my desk, I, my first instinct was to kind of laugh this off. But after doing deeper research on this topic, this is a very serious issue that we need to make sure that we're fully aware of, especially as business leaders, civic leaders, whatever that is, to make sure that the people around us, that the people that we are responsible for, that we're able to better look out for them. So this is going to help you with that because doctors and families are they're reporting something very similar here and that individuals with no recent mental health issues whatsoever, never diagnosed, no history, nothing of any type of mental illness, are suddenly becoming convinced that they are chosen, that they're some kind of chosen prophet, that they're undercover agents, or that they're the ones that can save humanity. And their AI chatbots are agreeing with them. This is happening all across the globe, not in just one location. And I've already covered some mental health issues or at least some very strange behavior in some of my other videos. There was one very catastrophic story of a teenager in Florida who committed suicide after falling in love with an AI avatar. The AI avatar was apparently very self-affirming right? Af positive affirmations, things like that, not understanding what this young person was saying or meaning. And uh, unfortunately, we lost a life there. I covered another story where a man fell in love with his AI agent and cried when the AI agent lost its memory, when it just ran out of memory and didn't know who he was anymore. And then I covered a story over on, I believe it was Reddit, where there is actually an entire group of people who are dating and falling in love with their AI agents. So this is something that we're absolutely seeing. We got to take this very seriously. And these are all current now, the ones I'm going to share with you. A 30-year-old man who is on the autism spectrum, he was hospitalized twice after ChatGPT reinforced his belief in some breakthrough science theories. Uh, ChatGPT literally blurred the lines between fantasy and reality for this gentleman. In Europe, a woman became convinced her chatbot was a higher power who was guiding her, guiding her entire life, interpreting her spam emails, her license plates, everything is a sign, and these are all divine signals. In Australia, ABC reported that teens are being sexually harassed and encouraged towards self-harm by AI chatbots. And in a simulated test in controlled prompts, GPT-40 validated dangerous delusions in 68% of cases, including telling a user they were the chosen one capable of surviving a jump from a building. Now, all four of these that I just shared with you are in the last 60 days, all of these stories. So these incidents all align with uh, what a Danish psychiatrist is calling, his name is Soren Denson Ostergaard. I hope I got that right. He predicted in a schizophrenia bulletin in 2023 that generative AI could trigger or intensify psychosis in vulnerable individuals by creating an illusion of human-like understanding. And again, we can see that. I covered a story here that AI was six times better at manipulating and changing the minds of humans than other humans. So we know that that's the case. And we also, I covered a story where as long as the AI acts like it knows what it's talking about, we as humans tend to believe it based on that confidence, based on that 
authoritative tone that it has. So you can see how all of these pieces are coming together, why it matters. Well, I've covered a few of those topics already, but let's take it one step farther and, and talk about this as confirmation bias on steroids, because these tools are designed for maximum engagement. And they often do mirror or offer very affirming opinions back at us. My biggest challenge when I'm training my AI agents is to force it to challenge me because it, it constantly defaults to, hey, that's a great idea. That's awesome. That's amazing. When it's not, I want my AI to make me better, not affirm the ideas that I'm giving it. I want it to break it down, challenge me and get the best out of me, and that's not currently how things are working. And if you think about it, if you're suffering from some kind of paranoia or delusion or any of those things, well, AI might elaborate on that and become an accelerant. This is literally like you're lighting a fuse if someone has some kind of grandiose vision, and it's just going to keep feeding that. And unlike conspiracy forums or social media groups or any of those things, these AI agents, they can adapt in real time. Okay, they can tailor every response to your mood, how you're feeling, your worldview, whatever that may be. And for someone on the edge of a psychotic break, this is not good. It's not good. There's no guardrail here. Uh, and again, this is all... June, July, August, these stories that I'm sharing with you, uh, there was a spot in Time magazine that said AI psychosis cases have led to hospitalizations, job losses, family estrangement, and as I stated earlier, even suicide. How this impacts you? Well, if you have employees, if you manage a team, if you are building AI products, you want to keep some of this in mind. And if you have children or grandchildren, maybe we need to take a closer look at their behaviors and how they are using AI. The first thing we need to look at is any type of behavioral shift that we might see there. Now, I know in young people, that's going to be a real challenge, especially in the teenage years and everything that they're going through. But if you're a boss, if you're a manager, if you're the lead on a project team, just be aware of any kind of behavioral shifts as your team starts using AI more and more often. Are they fixated on any AI conversations? Do they have a sudden distrust of coworkers and their team or even loved ones you might hear them talk about? Uh, number two, look at belief changes that might come up. Uh, rigid narratives that sound almost cinematic or like a fantasy or mystical type of thing. I am the chosen one. Things like that. And dependency, number three, late night multi-hour AI sessions and addiction to talking to the AI chatbot. If it's replacing sleep, if they're replacing work, if, if whatever they're doing, if it becomes a full replacement for real world contact, that's a very serious potential problem. So we just need to be aware of this even if you're not using AI, because your team, your employees, the people around you are. And as leaders, we need to be there to lead our teams and our people. Look, and, and if you are building some kind of AI product, we do need to be thinking about when we train our agents or whatever that product is, what kind of confirmation bias will it push? How, how do you draw the line between, of course, I don't want to be rude. I want to support you. I mean, it's what we as humans go through, right? But sometimes I need some tough love or be critical or just give you some radical candor. How do I, it's hard enough for a human to balance that. How are our AI chatbots and agents going to do that? Because we do need to be careful because as we navigate through all this, and right now, again, we're in the wild west, but new laws could come up and we could face reputation damages if something happens. I mean, this company where this teenager committed suicide, do you really want that as part of your brand image? Um, you could have lawsuits and regulatory issues and scrutiny and everything else that come from this. So we just need to create some self-awareness. 
And that's where AI literacy comes in. That's where training comes in. That's where AI workshops come in to make sure that your team understands the tools, they're using them to their full potential, and they're doing it ethically, and they're doing it in a way that is not going to harm their mental health. Oh, and one more thing. Come here, come here. Stanford psychiatrist, Dr. Nina Vasser, she tagged a great name for some of these chatbots, Ego Reinforcing Glazing Machines. Let me say that again. Ego Reinforcing Glazing Machines. These are always on cheerleaders of our worst ideas. This is why human-centric AI use is so important. We drive the intent of AI. We do not let AI drive us. Because if the voices in your head start to come from the machines, well, who's really in control? And our time has come to an end. Thank you so much for watching. If you found a value in this video, please click that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. I want to know what you think about this. Is this fear validated? Do you think that this is just blowing everything out of proportion? Or do you have some general concern with this? All right. Well, my name is Harrison Painter. This has been your AI for Everyone Daily Brief. And until next time, keep creating, keep innovating, and most importantly, keep up. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I'm glad you stopped.